All right, welcome back to Adobe Lightroom Classic. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at presets and collections inside of the program. Now they're located over here. So we have presets right here and collections right here. But before we get to that, there's actually another section with something that is very similar to a preset because it's predetermined. If you come on over here to your color profiles, you'll notice that I have mine set on Adobe Color. But you can come in here and hit these little four little pictures that we see and click that. And inside of that, you're gonna have other options. So we have our favorites, which of course, is what we have set, which is Adobe. We have Adobe Raw. We have some camera matching ones. And these are all very similar. They're just a, a predetermined look before you start editing inside of Lightroom. So landscape is gonna view some more color saturation and contrast. And then if you go to portrait, you're gonna see it's a more flat image with less color saturation. Then we have some artistic ones. We have some black and white ones. We have some modern ones and we have some vintage ones. And these are all really easy. If you hover over them, they show you what it's gonna look like. If we click on it, it's going to apply it to this image. And then what's cool about these is there's actually a slider so you can control the amount of it. So if we want less of this effect, we can go this way until zero and it removes it or we can add more of that effect. So we'll go ahead and close that out and I'm gonna reset it. And those are your profile adjustments over there. Those are available and you can apply these actually when you import the image. And look, it's not gonna change it so you can't get back to a normal image. It's just gonna apply it during the import if it's something that you wanted to do. All right, so over here we've got presets and there are a ton of presets. And yes, you can buy presets and you can make your own presets. I personally am not a huge fan of presets, but that's because I work more in Photoshop than I actually do in Lightroom. So let's go ahead and take a look. Presets are predetermined adjustments, meaning they made some adjustments over here using all this stuff, and then they saved it, and then when you come over here and you open these up and you hover over them, they're giving you that look from an adjustment over here. So if I came here and I clicked on this orange one, it's not doing anything but making the adjustment for me. So you can see there's a little bit of saturation in the color. There's some adjustments here. Now, one thing that you need to know, just because you hit a preset does not mean that you are done. It gives you an effect, but a lot of times you need to know how to come over here and adjust it. Because let's say you don't want the whites totally blown out like it is in this image. You want to knock those back down. You can slide that. It's still giving you an effect, but it's not affecting the whites as much as where we had it before or when it was slid over here a little bit. So you need to understand how the program works and all these adjustments to refine what you do over here. So go ahead and close that up and we'll go to something different. Let's go to futuristic and we can go over to futuristic and we can hover over those different images and see what we get. And you can see in an image like this, if I click on this, it's doing a good job and there are portions of this that look really cool. But if you look at her face, in her body, it's just way too dark. It's blending into the background. So this is another situation where you could use this effect, but understanding how to use the program, I could then come in here and say, hey, I wanna take the brush and make a selective adjustment and we'll make it small so it just affects her head. Then I can come on over here to exposure and I can adjust this and brighten it up. I can open the shadows up and you can see we're getting a much better image there. If I come over here and I turn this on and off, you can see this is off where you can't see the adjustment. And then I, if I was to turn this back on, you can see what we did. So we used a preset, but we're refining that preset by understanding how the program works. And we did that by making a selective adjustment just on the face. Now, if I wanted to come in here and just lighten this body area up, I could apply that there if I wanted. It's a little bit too much. So in this case, since it's just a little bit too much, I can reduce the density of this and then paint and apply this. And then it's going to adjust it, but not as much in the face. And if we hover over this mask, you can see 
the white area is where we have 100%, and the gray area is where we have 58%. And that's giving us a better selective adjustment. So these are presets, and, and all you really need to do for presets is you need to take some time and find out which ones you like. So you can come in here and say, oh, I like this preset, I like that preset. And let's say that this food preset is one that we absolutely love. All you need to do then is right click or a control click on a Mac and go add to favorites. And if we come up here to favorites, you can see that these two looks have been added. So we have this food look and we had this one that I added before. So you can add the favorite one so you don't have to navigate through everything into your favorites and you're good to go. You can also create your own presets. So right here, we can create and import and manage our presets. So let's go ahead and create our own presets. So what we can do is we can come up here and we'll make this high contrast. Let's brighten this up a little bit. We're gonna increase our black point. And then we're gonna come down to the saturation and we're gonna really desaturate that image. And we'll just think that this is the greatest preset that we've ever seen. Actually, let's add a vignette to it. So we can come down to effects and we can add a little bit of a vignette and we're good to go. So now we have this effect that we love. So we can come down here and go to presets, hit the plus, hit create preset. And you'll notice right here that you have a whole bunch of different things that you can select from. So if you did not want to add, let's say that post crop vignette, we could remove that from this location. So anything that doesn't have a check will not be added. Anything that does have a check in this case, it's everything is good. So we can then name this and I'll put it my great preset and we'll hit create and we're good to go. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but when I created that preset, I saved it into this color grading preset. Now I could add a new group or I could use the user presets, but in this case, I just use this one. So what all you need to do is come on over to here and that is gonna be located in this location. So we would look for migrate preset and we'll click on a different image. I'll come over here, migrate preset and boom, just like that, it applies that effect to this image. And that's basically how you use presets in Adobe Lightroom. The next thing that we have here is collections. And let's go ahead and open collections up. And we have two different types of collections that we can work with. Some are just your basic collection. So let's go ahead and create a basic collection. We're gonna come over here to the plus. We're gonna click that and we're gonna create either a collection set, which is gonna be like a folder that your collections are gonna go into, or we can just create a collection I'll go on this top level that we see right here. So in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and create a collection. And we're gonna call this collection, I favorites. And since we're not creating a collection set, we're not gonna pick a collection set, but we can do that next time. And right here it says include selected photos. So meaning that this image is selected, do we wanna include that? That's gonna be fine. Your next option is to make a new virtual copy. So it's gonna make a copy of that image and place that in the collection. That's not something I do. I don't wanna duplicate my images. And the way collections work are a little bit weird. It's not actually moving this image from this location, this folder location to this new collections folder. It's just remembering the path of where it is. The problem with this is if you change the path, it will not be able to find the image. And then set as target collection, meaning is this the one that I wanna set as my target? And I could put yes, and that will set it as my target collection for right now. And I hit okay. And now you can see this has got one image, which is that there. In this case, I don't want that. So let's go ahead to previous import and we're back to where we wanna go. If you're finding the information in any of these videos helpful, if you could please give me a thumbs up, that would be wonderful. If you would like to subscribe and get future videos as they come up, because I'm gonna be doing a whole series on Lightroom right here, that would be great as well. So over here on the left-hand side, you can see, and I'll close this so it's easy to find, we've got our collections. And right here, we've got my favorite collections. Now that I've selected this second image, and we can go ahead and click on this so you can see it. If you want to then add to your collection, 
it's really easy. If you like this image, you can simply drag this up and put it on my favorites and it's gonna be now inside of that collection right here. And for coming through and I wanna add this image, I can drag this up here and it's gonna to add to my collections. And what you can use this for is, as you're shooting, you're gonna create lots of folders with different images. And in the end, you don't wanna go back through maybe at the end of the year to find out what your favorite photos are. If you create a collection with your favorite images, all you need to do is click on it and there you're gonna find your favorite images. Now, each one of these might be in a different location, but they're all gonna be stored in this one spot. So that's what you use the basic collections for. All right, so next we're gonna create a smart collection set and then a smart collection. So if we come up here, we can click on the plus and I'm gonna come down here and say create collection set. I'm gonna call this my smart collections. We're not gonna pick a collection set at this point because this is actually gonna be the collection set. So we're gonna hit create. You can see it makes a new folder. I could remove this folder if I wanted by selecting it, but I'm not gonna. We're gonna come up next and hit the plus again. And this time we're gonna create a smart collection. So we're gonna hit create smart collection. We're gonna select it. And in this case, I want my smart collections, not smart collections. And we're now gonna create this new collection. We're gonna rename this and call it five star images. All right. And what we're gonna do is have the computer automatically filter out all the images that I give five stars. So how do we do that? Well, it's really easy. And look, there's an infinite amount of ways that you can create these variables to create these smart collections. We're just gonna do a really simple one. So we're gonna say the rating, okay, meaning the stars, which is what we want, is greater than or equal to five stars and then we would hit create. But you could just hit plus and add a secondary thing. So we could say, and if the label color is red. So in this case, the image would have to have five stars and have a label color of red. In this case, we don't really want that, so we're gonna remove it. We just want five stars. So we'll go ahead and hit create. And so automatically the computer has found 19 images with five stars or more. Now, one of the issues, if you look right here, it has this little exclamation mark. This exclamation mark means that they can't find the image. The image preview is still in the collection, but if I wanted to work on this, it wouldn't be able to find it because actually I've deleted these because these are some photos that some of my students took. But what this will do is automatically add an image every time you give five stars to that image. So let's go ahead and go here and let's click on this image right here. I'll hit the number five because that will give it five stars. If I go back to this, you'll notice it has 20 and now it's added that image to this five star collection. And so that's what a smart collection is. You give it a variable and it's able to filter through a variety of material to find the images that fit that possibility. Well, that's it for presets and collections. Well, that's it for today. Next time, we're gonna come over here to the develop module and we're gonna take a look at the crop, the cloning tools, the red eye reduction available inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. We do have a Facebook group and there's a very specific reason I created this. If you want the information, it's in the description below. But a lot of comments I get, people are asking me questions and I cannot help them because I need to see what the issue is. Facebook allows you to either post an image or a video, and it makes it really easy for me to give you the answer to whatever your problem is.